Welcome to Delta Cast Tutorials. Today I'll be applying a short arm cast using Delta Light Plus. For this particular application, the patient has an injured wrist and it could be a fracture, it could be a very bad sprain, but our goal is to totally circumferential type of mobilization with a cast. So we're gonna get that patient in neutral to 20 degrees of extension, free from ona and radial deviation. And we're gonna do what we call an interosseous mold to limit supination and pronation. And even when we get ready to do this, we make sure we talk about something. When we do our mold per se, we'll focus on the forearm, not in the articulating area of the wrist where the nerves are. So we'll concentrate on our mold, putting a gentle mold on that to make a flat impression on the dorsal and volar you know, aspect of the uh, cast. And let's go ahead and do our stockinette. We'll measure for that first. So we can get some padding and we can just go ahead and we're gonna terminate the cast at the distal part of crease. And we're gonna terminate on the proximal aspect, maybe one or two inches from the antecubital space but at the same time allow for the patient to bend their arm at least 90 degrees so it doesn't hit the biceps. And here's our measurement for our stockinette. And we'll be using a two inch or a three inch depending on the diameter of the patient's extremity. It should feel loose on the extremity but not loose in the joint area where there's a lot of space. You can get the stockinette and just add on 50% extra for the length of your uh, stockinette. We wanna add it in the antecubital space here, a little bit above, okay? And then have the stockinette terminate at least to the PIP joint of the fingers, okay? So here's my stockinette. I'm gonna open this up, roll it down on the patient's extremity. Be careful to be gentle. And if you can put your hand like that for me. All right, so now we're gonna make a little hole for the thumb. We're gonna slide that over so we can see what we're doing and then make a hole big enough for the thumb to go through, but it's not too large where it opens up too much of the thenar eminence. Now, one of the things as you put this short arm cast on, we're gonna be concentrating on making sure it's angled down and also enough space for the range of motion of the thumb. So now I'm gonna add some stocking it for the thumb. Maybe need about six inches. And what we'll do with this is just make a little slit and then we're gonna apply it with the slit facing toward the index finger. And then this extra, we have a choice to cut some of it off or fold it down. All right, so now what we're gonna do is add our padding. And our padding roll is gonna be up to the sky like a snail, if you will, this way or this way. We're gonna start at the wrists, go to the hand, and then work our way to the forearm. So I'm just lowering the patient down in position so I can see, and I'm standing directly in front of the patient so I can see all the different planes of the extremity. And when I wanna see the owner aspect, I can just lift up there. So start on the wrist, go to the hand immediately. And this particular padding, I can shrink it down and hold onto the padding itself and make it a little bit more narrow to go pass through this web space. Then I do it again. Then I start working my way proximal, doing what we call 50-50 coverage. Every revolution around, I'm gonna cover 50% of what I just put on. And we're gonna have a minimum of two layers, max of four, but we're gonna palpate over the extremity, especially the bony prominences, and visually check for any thinness of padding. Because this is a cast, we gotta be really conscious of our padding is correct and wrinkle-free as much as possible.
All right, so now I'm gonna check the bony prominences, look it over for any shadows or thinness of padding. And now we're ready to apply our cast tape. So I throw some gloves on. And one thing that you'll like about the cast tape is when we apply this, you can use two inch or three inch. That's gonna be your preference. But the big thing is ensuring you get it on fast enough where the cast tape is really soft so you can start to laminate it to make it get hard, faster, or set. The set time is gonna be three to five minutes. The cure time is gonna be close to 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm gonna be using Delta Light Plus. Dip that in the water there to bubble seas. Bring it out. And then we're gonna start on the wrist and work our way up to the hand and back down to the forearm. It's a particular areas that is important that you know how to do. And that is when you go through the web space, we wanna do what we call a JJ cut. So I'm gonna put the hand down so you can see what I'm doing a little bit here. And I'll just do a little curve and then I'll flip these little sharp edges over. So on the bowler aspect, you will see that there's hardly any sharp edges hanging out that can cause issue or irritation to the patient. Then I'll encompass that and then come back and do it again. Also our goal is in the web space to have that width no larger than or wider than the index finger itself because we wanna have good opposition of the thumb and index finger. I'm not twisting it per se, I'm just laying the edges, fold them over just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is just connect that area. Doing my 50-50 coverage. And again, I'm using a three inch, you can use a two inch if you wish. It's sometimes some people like to use the wider cast tape to cover more faster. And another reason why some people may want to use three inches when if you need to do a mold, it will stay a little bit easier because it's a, a little bit thicker coverage. All right, so now, as you can see in the Palmer area, I got it angled, and that's important for range of motion of the extremity itself. So I cut that off. Now this laminated. We don't want to laminate this way. We want to laminate up and down. So this is what you're going to do when you start to laminate. You want to support the extremity because, number one, they're in a lot of pain, and you can start to laminate gentle. And then you switch hands to laminate the dorsal aspect and more of the ulnar aspect also. Now, once it starts feeling like pitting the edema or if you can feel the cast tape start to feel a little bit harder, you want to start concentrating on your mold and the interosseous mold in particular. So I talked about earlier that we don't want to press in the area where the, the patient flexes the wrist because that's where the nerves are. So you want to concentrate on the forearm portion. So you'll hold that three seconds or more, and then work your way down. Now it's imperative that you don't let the patient supinate or pronate afterwards because what they're doing is opening that spot up. A short arm cast is gonna limit supination and pronation. It won't stop it, but it will just limit it. If you need to limit supination and pronation period, you need to add a long arm cast. Now another thing we wanna concentrate on is this area in the distal palm crease we want to take away any space there so when we pull the stocking it down, you don't see a big gap there in the in between the palm and the cast itself. So I'll just put a little bit of pressure there. And then I'll come back and reapply my molds. So what we want to do here is I'm going to show you this. Look from the side view. I'm trying to show a more flattened appearance on the dorsal and volar aspect. And you can see that flattened mold there. 
So that's what we want to limit supination and pronation. You don't want to put on a cast and it's just totally round looking and it's not fitting the shape of the patient's extremity. So what I'm doing now is just fixing the stock in that because I'm gonna roll it over and we wanna add our cosmetic layer. What it does, two purposes, it makes it look a little bit better at the end and also we wanna add some more cast tape for strength for the cast. So I'll just lower this down around the thumb. And now let's lower this portion around the index finger. So you can do this, this is a different technique you can. You can find the PIP joint of the index finger and you just cut there. And then you would just wrap this around that portion of their thumb. Now let's add our last roll. Now you notice what I'm doing, I'm kind of wringing this out a lot more because on this particular roll, I already have my mold that I really want, and now I can put this on without worrying about the patient moving too much. All right, here we go with our cuts again the little J cut, and you could open your hand up just a tad there. And what I'll do is just fold the little, if you will, fish bones that sticks out that can cause patient irritation. Some people will put mole skin or some type of adhesive uh, edger on the edge, which you can do, but you wanna limit those little sharp edges as much as possible that may be irritating to the patient. All right, so what I did is folded them both sides. Now I'm just gonna lock that in and I'll finish out the last portion here. All right, so again, what we wanna do is laminate this last roll. So I'm just gonna turn the hand around, take away that space in that palmer area, put her back neutral, cause I was kind of turning our, our arm a little bit. Now, when you get done, you should see a, a more contoured look in the Palmer area. And if you can see here, we wanna take away a lot of the space in between the Palmer area. We want it to have it look like it's the hand, okay? We don't wanna have a big old club looking type of cast. All right, so what we just did is a short arm cast using Delta Light Plus. Now, this is some small things you wanna make sure we notice. Number one, that we have full range of motion of the fingers. And you notice that the cast is angled here. That's gonna allow for that good range of motion. If your cast is straight across, you're inhibiting the fourth and fifth finger movement, opposition. And our goal with this cast is not have them have to go to therapy for so much longer just to get their grip strength back. And then what we did here is that we made this nice and contoured around that thumb without having a whole bunch of sharp edges hanging out. Plus we got good range of motion for the thumb. Then we terminate the cast where the patient's at 90 degrees and we have a nice padded edge. We don't wanna have where we push down in this all extra casty or mini hard at the edge. That is not good padding edge. And that is the short arm cast using Delta Light Plus. Thank you. If you need any additional support or training regarding Delta Cast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.